board. All right, it is the 15th of September, and thanks for jumping on the call. Glenn is on a plane right now, so that's why he's not joining us. Um, for starters, it was like a pretty low volume week, so like huge props to the following people that actually made it on the board for um, volume over 100 points. Um, Glenn and I are on there, Dan with 217, Gretchen with 210, Chad Miller, a.k.a. <laughs> Courtney <laughs> with 170, um, Kyle Hamblin 135, Sunny with 125, Holly with 125, and Elisa Ketterman with 105. So that's it. There's just a few people, but um, awesome job. Keep up the great work. It's definitely... Like, I feel like I've talked to numerous different people that have all said it seems so slow right now, and I don't know what it is, but just know that the busy season is coming, so keep planting those seeds. Um, okay, so I'm just going to dive right into this. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about money, and it's kind of a weird topic for me to be talking about because I am not the numbers person at all, and I was kind of laughing before this call. Glenn left at like four o'clock this morning, so normally he'll sit tell me what I made. I haven't even looked in the back office to see what I made this week. Um, it's just not how my mind works. Like I'm not about the financial part of it. But I ever since Summit, so I always leave Summit with this couple different takeaways. Like first thing, um, Jennifer, I'm gonna mute you. Okay. Um, the first thing is I always feel like it's a constant reminder that the top coaches, when we hear them speak and we hear their stories and they are, it's like a constant reminder. They are no different than you or I, but they work a lot harder than you or I. Like these people are, they have made crazy success in their businesses because they they work at it. They just invite more than we invite and they do the vital behaviors more than we do. And that has led them to like some awesome success. But the other part I leave with, and it's been like this at every summit. And part of it is because I'm just kind of a plain Jane by nature, but I always leave their um, feeling somewhat overwhelmed by like the glitz and glamor of it all. And I mean, for those of you that have never been to summit, it's, it's definitely like anything goes. So someone like at some of the parties, someone may be in a $500 gown and someone may be in like their workout clothes from that morning's workout. Like there's a huge range, but in my mind, I think I'm always, or I'm learning this about myself that in my mind, I'm saying like, I could never afford that where I think the reality is, I, I wouldn't choose to spend money on some of the things that people do. And it's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just, it's not, it's just different for me. Like I'm just playing and some of that stuff doesn't matter to me, but I ha I'm, I'm realizing now, like there's, there's this, making money isn't just about like making money. It's just the way that weight loss isn't just about losing weight. Like it's about, who you want to become and what you believe is possible. And just, I mean, this kind of ties in with our call last week. So we had the whole vision board thing. And I mean, when you look at your vision boards, there's things for your business, but maybe there's like a dream home on there. Or like for me, it's the map of all the places that we've been and all the places that I still want to go and want to take my family on these trips with our camper and just go exploring. Well, that's not free to do that. So um, I feel hopefully this call will tie in a little bit with like our what's on our vision board requires resources as well. So at this point, like you might be thinking of a few objections like when I, I am that or that I was I'm kind of that person where when you talk about money, and I remember one time we had a guest speaker on the call that came in and she was real like, okay, if you want to make this amount of money, you have to sell this challenge pack and you have to do this, this, and this. And after that call, we kind of got feedback from people that said, um, 
that's not what our team is about. Like, it's not about making money. And she was just way too much on the business side of it. And I mean, people were kind of caught off guard by that. So I don't want you to think that this is a call about being greedy or selfish or, you know, people have the people that have money that waste it. Um, I don't need a glamorous life to be happy. Like I'm, I'm sure you can have those objections. And I, I mean, I've had those too, which is why I never like hone in on the money. It's just not my personality, but I was re so, okay. So I finally got on board with the, you are a badass book and I've had it for like two years or a year and a half or something. And I started reading it and I hate her bad language in the book. Like, I don't think she should talk that, that way in a resource that could help so many people. But, um, I finally got it on audible and one day I was cutting the grass and I was listening to the book and there's some really great things in that book. So if you can just get past some of the language in there, um, it's just, there's some really good things. And so I'm cutting the grass and there's this chapter all about money and your relationship with money. And it like really stood out to me. I mean, there's a lot of things in the book that stood out, but that really like hit home for me because she was saying, when you level up with your idea of what's possible and you decide to go for it, you open yourself up to the means to accomplish those things. So when you're you know, you're looking at your dream board and you're envisioning those things that you want to happen. You want to happen with your business, with your life, with your family. The means to accomplish all that are going to come to you. And the idea, like first I was like, this is total like weird and hocus pocus. And I'm pretty much open to many, many things. So, but she was saying how you have to manifest the money. And I'm like, what? Like she's literally giving these examples of how she wanted a um, certain big, beautiful home to rent that she could write her book in. And she's like, and I just thought it in my head. I pictured the whole thing and how it was going to happen. And I wanted it to have, you know, like this view and I wanted it to be in the mountains or whatever it was. And she's like, and I started to doubt that. And then I got right back on track and remembered like the universe has the capability to bring these things to me because I'm picturing it in my head. And still I'm like, this is the craziest concept. I probably listened to the chapter like four times already, but um, in the meantime, like I've, I've read other books that all kind of have the same idea. And that is that like the universe has all this to offer and, but we have to be open to it and we have to know what we want and we have to focus on what exactly it is that we want. So whether it's buying a house or, putting your kids in a certain school or, you know, college or whatever, um, building a soup kitchen, hiring a cleaning lady. It's like, no matter what it is, and we can all want different things for different reasons. Um, there's all these things require money and resources. So you can manifest it if you insist it's, there it's out there for you and it sounded like for me i don't know maybe you guys are like totally on board with it like for me it just sounded like so odd but now that i'm reading it like i realize that in my head that's what's stopping me because i'm a super positive person but when i think about money i think well i don't need that to make me happy like i mean i have a nice house and we can you know we pay we afford our mortgage and everything but what's most important to me is like being here with my family. And then I think about my, like why I do beach body. Well, it's to be there for my family. Am I making like crazy money? No. Would it be nicer if I made more? Yeah, but I'm happy. Where, you know, I'm still, I'm so happy. Well, all these books, it's like you have to change your mindset and know that the universe is like full of abundant things. And if we can change our mind from thinking maybe negatively about money we can be positive about it and just start to receive it and actually start to receive the actual physical money as well. Um, and we've all heard that like, you know, if you want to be a certain way, like if you want to be successful, hang out with successful people. If you want to be positive, hang out with positive people. And our relationship to money is also like that. I mean, how we all know people that 
work their butt off. They're super negative about money and they never have enough. Like it's just a recurring theme in their life. They're always paycheck to paycheck and de dog tired because they work so many hours. And even that, when I read that, I was like, yeah, I can like name a couple people, you know, a couple people come to my mind. Um, so I think changing your mindset, I want to read you this part from her book and it's like money it's like she's having a conversation and money is speaking to her. And I just thought it was funny. It says, yeah, I think you're fun to hang out with too. Wait, what? You think I'm the root of all evil? How can you say that? All you talk about is how you wish you had more of me, even though you're scared to admit that you like me. And you say I'm not there for you and you think people who like me are greedy pigs, yet you get so ecstatic whenever I show up and you work so hard to get me to come over but I keep you in a constant state of worry and you hate dealing with me. And no matter what I do, it's never enough. And then she, you know, it's like money breaking up with her and it's like, Oh my gosh. Okay. I can totally relate to that. Like not that, I mean, yeah, you can have that conversation in your head. So what I'm getting, what I got out of it is like, we have to have a relationship with money, but it can be positive and we have to treat it like a positive relationship. We have to give it attention. We have to want it, nurture it, put effort into it and not fear it. Like don't fear money. Don't, don't hate it. Don't give into the voice in your head that says like, you have to choose, like your money's so tight and you have to choose either going on vacation or making your car payment or paying for your health insurance versus, you know, letting your kids play or be, you know, play whatever sports they want. It doesn't have to be an either or thing. I can make money. I can keep my integrity. I can have fun. I can reach more people and I can make an even bigger difference in the world. And those kind of words, as I was reading them and thinking about it, that's where I was like, okay, like now it's making, it's sounding better to me. It's making more sense. I, um, it's not greed or selfishness. Um, so I had to kind of get over myself and my thoughts that, you know, I'm not greedy if I want more money to do more things and reach more people. Um, so your beliefs hold the key to your financial success. Believe you can have it. Believe it exists. Go after it. Drop the mindset that you serve the world better by not taking too much for yourself. I mean, you can... If you're doing that, you're, you may be withholding the gifts that God gave you to go out there and reach more people. You only have to feel like gross or weird about money if you're taking it from someone dishonest, you know, dishonestly, or you're, they're paying you for a service that you're not really providing to them or you're not really giving them the product that they paid for. So one action, and I'm going to give you two actions during this, but one action is to get clear on how you feel about money. And in the book, she says, like, actually write this down, write down, like, and maybe you have a positive feeling about it. Um, but I think a lot of people have a negative thing when people say, like, you know, the world revolves around it. Well, it kind of does. I mean, you need resources. Um, so write down, like, just as an example, I don't trust money. I don't believe it'll come to me. Like I, and I do, I know I have said that if Gwen was here, I know he'd be saying like, I say that I've said that in the past. Like, I just don't feel like I'm ever going to be really wealthy. And he's, and he always says like, why would you limit yourself like that? And now that I'm like reading this and studying these books, I realize like, yeah, that's, it's just how I feel about money. But the action step of writing this all down is then to go back and turn those into affirmations. So if I'm saying, I don't believe I'll ever, you know, have financial freedom, I need to turn that around and say, like, it will come to me. I'm manifesting these in my mind, like, what I want and my vision, and I'm going to be clear about it. And I'm, um, I'll give you an example later of how she says to be specific about it, but change those thoughts you have about money into positive things and to affirmations and then get really clear on where you desire to be. So we don't just want to survive. We want to thrive. And, you know, maybe you want to hire an assistant with whatever job you have, or maybe you want to be able to take all your friends out to dinner and you pay. Like, I love stuff like that. And that's why when I'm reading this, I'm like, yes, I want more money because I like 
buying things for people. I like spoiling them. I like when I get a GoFundMe page sent to me on Facebook, I'm like, yes, I want to give you $100. Of course I do. If I did that for every single one, like Glenn would kill me. So that's why I need to make more money. Um, and also like maybe you want to give to your church and maybe you already do, but maybe you want to give 20% instead of 10% off of everything you make. So if you can have those clear visions, and I want to, um, let me see if I read the page down. She had a, has an example in here that I thought was really good. So, um, so envisioning yourself with the money, and here's an example of this, and, she, and here's another action step too, like write this down. Think about what it looks like for you and write it down. But here's an example of how specific. I see myself making $150,000 by December 31st by being an accountant and serving 30 new clients in the best way possible. I am so grateful for this $150,000 by December 31st that it allows me to take my family on a vacation, renovate our kitchen, and donate money to build schools in Kenya. I see myself in the jungle with my kids and my wife. We're staying at my favorite hotel. I feel so happy for being able to give my children this incredible life-changing experience and for bringing my wife such joy. I can also see the kitchen and how happy it's made my wife to finally have it. I see the faces of the kids in Kenya as they write on the chalkboard in the school I've helped pay for. I feel such joy from being able to make a difference in their lives. I'm so grateful for this $150,000 that I will, make, I will make by December 31st. I see the awesome clients I get to work with who are more than happy to pay me $100 an hour for my services. This money is mine. It's on its way to me now, and I see it in my bank account, and I'm so grateful for it. And that's her, that's the whole like manifest it, you know, like see it specifically, have these things written down um, and write it and like make it, make yourself feel invincible and then read it. Like don't just write it down and shove it in the drawer or send it to your success partner or whatever. Read it to yourself every day so you, you get that reminder and you start to believe that about yourself. Be your best, do your best and know that when you ex accept the best and receive the best, you can go out into the world and give people your best. And when I, when I read it like that, that's when I'm like, okay, maybe all this money thing isn't so bad. Like, it's not greedy. It's not selfish. It's, it's a way for you to serve even more people. So the, the other thing I um, liked about this was in a book um, – what was it called? The Science of Getting Rich. He really stresses that it's not, a, it's not a competition. So get the thoughts out of your head. And I thought this was perfect for beach body coaches because a lot of times, I don't know if you guys do this, but I'll see someone and I'm thinking, oh, they're just doing so good. Or they had so many comments on their posts. They probably got all the people, you know, like, clean eating group. Okay. She has 50. Now there's no one left for me. And we can't, we can't think of it like a competition. We aren't taking money from someone else. We're creating it. We're not, he, he stresses like be a creator, not a competitor. And just some examples, I mean, aside from beach body ones, but like we always talk about buying a house that has more land, but we'd need a small house and, you know, to be able to afford it in this school district. And, and I thought about that. It's like, I, I don't need to think every house that I could afford is gone. You know, I mean, it's, it's not a competition. Don't worry that someone else beat me to it. The same thing with coaching. Like, don't think that all the good coaches are signed up and, you know, Melanie Mitchell has this great team because she grabbed all the good coaches and there, now there's no one left for me. We're not seeking anything that isn't, possessed by someone else we're creating what we want and there's like this unlimited supply out there in the universe we just have to create it manifest it and then work towards it so we have to get on board with the concept of like increasing in life every every living thing is continually increasing your knowledge your wealth the people the amount of people you help and you know that definitely ties in with our job and our mission 
we always, to know more, be more, and do more, we must have more. We need more resources to be able to reach more people. And I feel like, you know, I mean, you guys know I'm like very um, faithful. And so I love when things like this can tie back into where I, where I think God wants me right now. And I see that like, yes, God would want me to have more resources because it does allow me to get out there and reach more people. So in order to create this success and to manifest this, and we have to act on it and you need a vehicle to produce an income. So ideally it's something like Beachbody or, you know, some kind of entrepreneurial act where it just seems like a lot of jobs, like just a nine to five job or an hourly job. It's just not the nature of that job to have unlimited wealth. But with Beachbody, you can see that there's just an unlimited way, unlimited ways to just keep growing and making money and to build your brand and to build your own company. Um, and just remember that earning more, it's not making us selfish or greedy, but it's empowering us to use our gifts and to help more people. And you can, you can go back to your why. I mean, all of this ties back in with your why. And I think, you know, the most common why that when you first start coaching, you're like, yeah, I just want to help people. Well, you can see why even with a pretty generic why like that, if you have more resources, you are helping more people. And if you're doing the vital behaviors um, and you're reaching more people, your income is going up, which is giving you more resources to reach out to even more people. And, you know, a lot of the top coaches, I mean, they're not just getting customers like you or I maybe from random or from our friends on Facebook. They're paying, they're advertising. They are putting out a lot of money to attract more people and get to know more people. But that in turn is like so many more lives that they get to change along the way. And I think about this like, as a really faithful person, I, Glenn and I were talking about it earlier, and he said, I mean, it's almost like when, when you see your kids, like they have, you know, a favorite toy or, a, you know, co you know, favorite sweatshirt or something, and they're with a little friend, and they're, you see them sharing with a friend, and you didn't have to tell them to share, but they just did it all on your own, and you're like, oh my gosh, like, I'm so proud of them, and that's so awesome that, like, their little giving heart, and it's like, that's how, that's how we can be. I mean, think how God is looking down at us if we're able to, you know, he blesses us with more resources, and we, we use it, like, we use it for the good of his kingdom, and to reach people, whether it's I mean, I feel like with Beachbody, I'm able to reach people not just for health and wellness, but just because I'm getting out of my comfort zone and posting things on my wall, maybe the person I helped today was through a scripture I posted and it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, an actual challenge pack or something. Um, but it all, like, it all ties back into what we do as coach, health coaches and wellness coaches. And I'm just... I don't know if this call was helpful for you guys or not. I feel like I'm learning about this as I go. I'm definitely like trying to grasp the whole manifest thing. I don't have my like detailed um, envision written out yet, but um, but I'm think I'm thinking about it. I'm praying about it, and I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on some of this. I need to unmute you guys or actually maybe if you have a thought just raise your hand and I will unmute you um okay Courtney hold on okay so I was just gonna say I think this is a good subject because I think this is one of those nobody wants to talk about it but it's a huge part of our business if you want to be successful with this you are going to have to deal with the money part of it and mm -hmm. you know I'll say this I don't think $160 or $140 to buy a challenge pack that's going to change your life, not only physically, but mentally, spiritually, is all that much money. I, I would pay it over again for where it took me just of getting out of feeling awful about myself and kind of opening my eyes to a whole new world. And that's something I share with people who tell me it's a lot of money. Yes, it is a lot of money to 
to put up front, but if this changes everything for you, if it teaches you life lessons, then I think it's money well spent. Right. Um, but, but with that, you know, I know when I first started and I know it's something my coaches have talked about is, you know, how do you approach someone and ask them to pay this money? And, and then, you know, that, that's a hard, that's a hard thing to talk about. And I think that's where it always has to come back to. You have to share personally why it's meant so much to you. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And, and like I, some of you might know my story, but it was something I struggled with for a while and I constantly prayed about it and constantly just felt God reassuring me saying, this is where I want you. This is exactly how I'm going to bless you. And you know, he is. And, and that's kind of cool to see because like Beth said, when you get to see someone's life transform and you got to have a little bit of a hand in that, it's worth it. You know, it's mm-hmm. worth every single no you get. And so I think that's just kind of the cool part of God blessing you with it is, you know, you know, Beth, I know that you guys tithe and we tithe and the rules always been 10% and God Mm -hmm. just keeps providing. So that's one of those, well, you know, he's fulfilling his promise. And so I'm just going to keep doing what he asks of me. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think too, when I was, I didn't say, or I I didn't have this written down, so I forgot to say it, but one of the things with Beachbody is like we can help change lives through health and wellness and feeling better, but then we also have this resource for people that don't get to be with their families. I mean, sometimes I look at people that are really wealthy and I think in my head, I'm like, well, why would I want to be like them? All they do is work. They're not, like, I'm with my family. So maybe, you know, we're eating mac and cheese so nice because it's cheap, but but we're together, you know? So I think we have to realize too, and that's, I don't share the business opportunity enough, but I mm-hmm. think we all need to be braver about that. So people know that if you hate your job or you are missing everything with your kids, I mean, I'm an athletic trainer. So if I worked a job as an athletic trainer, like, like I did before we had kids, I would miss all my kids' sporting events because I'd be working at the high school or wherever covering everyone else's kids' sporting events. So, I mean, this job literally allows me to – I'm not where I want to be yet financially, but it's given me all kinds of freedom to be there for, you know, my family. So we have, you know, we have something to offer people that goes even further than – well, not further than their wellness, because I think that's probably, you know, one of the most important things, but it can give them the financial freedom to be with their families or to give more to their church or to support whatever it is. I mean, maybe someone wants a brand new Cadillac, but maybe someone else wants, you know, to donate to the soup kitchen, like both of, you know, whatever it is for you. um, I think you just have to know that like, we're not being greedy. We're being we're just going after more resources to be more of who God wants us to be. Hold on, Tiffany, let me unmute you. Okay. Um, first and foremost, uh, I know it's been a while y'all since I've been on, uh, I want to thank y'all again for this beautiful spray. You gave my fiance at his funeral. You're welcome. Everyone that donated. Uh, uh, I have to keep taking myself off because got his on here. But um, what I want to say is this: what this is exactly what I needed to hear tonight. Uh, God, God, for you. Beth in a I'm not about me. I'd rather be a servant. You know, does that make sense? I'd rather serve than worry her. So tonight made me realize like there's no way I can give unless I, I reach out. I reach out to people because I was so like I just felt like I was bombarding their 
inbox, you know, or I was bothering their life. And I realized that, you know, watching as I watched my fiance slash husband, we were supposed to be married. He passed too quickly. Um, pass. It made me realize that, you know what, like this, each and every one of us can go. Yeah. We're not promised tomorrow. So that reaching out is no longer a scared thing with me. It's a necessity for me. Right. And um, the Lord bless you tonight with this message because I always thought of, I grew up in a family that was well off. Um, and, you know, so I always looked at money as a bad thing. You know what I mean? As you, you grow and you mature into an adult. Um, and I, you know, say that many times I'd rather serve than receive money. I'd rather just, I'm a giver. I'd love to see people smile by giving them gifts or helping someone or giving them something they could never receive ever. Um, but I thank you. God bless you. Uh, honestly, I'm, I, I almost did not want to get on the call because like I said, I've been, you guys know I've been an emotional roller coaster. Um, and, but I'm glad uh, for some reason it, it was uh, obviously meant to be. So I got on the call and thank you uh, very much. Uh, you provided great content. You made me see things in a different light, Beth, uh, Courtney as well. And I will be instant messaging you, Courtney, because I think you're an amazeball person. You're just amazing. So, all right. Uh, uh, anyways, thank you for. Okay, uh, thanks, Tiffany. All right. Anybody else? I think Moppy said she needed unmuted, but I don't see her on here now. So, oh wait, Moppy. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I was just looking. Sorry. Go ahead. No, sorry. It just um dropped me right when I texted you. Oh. <laughs> I had to go in again. Um, nothing. I I was just gonna say um thank you for for talking about this topic and for for talking about something that um you know many of us don't you know don't want to mention it i'm like you uh in the sense that i don't i'm not the one to look at the account and see how much i made um you know but also i i do have to say this um like i think there is this misconception that money is bad um and i know that uh, many of the coaches that I start sometimes um, can feel that sort of pressure, like, oh, you know, um, I, I, my goal is not to make a bunch of money and that sort of thing. But I don't think money is bad, and I think it goes with the book. It's, um, it's, it's what you do with the money. And, you know, and I, I love when you said, you know, having the opportunity with doing things for others or just putting the money where your heart is basically and just make that your why. Um, so I, I, I absolutely love this topic. So thank you for holding it. Sure. Putting it in the table. Yeah. Thanks for the comment. Okay. Anyone else? And does anyone have any questions? I mean, it doesn't have to be related to money. <laughs> Nobody. Look at Dan by the glow of the fire. I'm so jealous of over that. <laughs> I see it in your glasses. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thanks for getting on the call. Um, and let us know, you know, let me know if you have questions as you start to think about it. The book, the two book, or there's actually three books. The one is the You Are a Badass. Um, and that there's a whole chapter on it. And then the science of getting rich is a very popular book. And there's also one called think and grow rich, which I haven't read that one, but um, Glenn has, and he, he said it's very similar to this whole, like manifesting it and, you know, going after it kind of concept. So if you want to know more about it, you might want to check, you know, check some of that out and please reach out to us if we can help you process any of this too. Thanks for getting on the call. I appreciate it. Bye guys.